Basement Blur Number One, Wisconsin. In a basement with whiskey, Zeppelin II, and cheese heads drunk on Hail Mary. Could start mess, but outnumbered. This is not the underground hug I long for. Very far away, and not. Milwaukee, not Norman. 2015, not 1985. Kindred demographics in beer, flannel, and guitar music. White boy infatuation with black pain. Discordant narrative with a beat. Another melaninless room. They are not the same. I was safe there. Oklahoma history outside those purple walls. Inside, we made our own. A brotherhood. A red-eyed Reagan ache. Here, it's Packers and Obama too long in charge. They okay with Jay-Z. Sport green and gold, not crimson and cream, though just as fevered. Fortune on the legs of black men they call nigga when game is done. Six years in a drunken cellar without cracker syntax. How? Hate across street, clan on campus, mostly love down here. Peace. My name is Koresh Ali Lansana, and I hope that all are staying safe and healthy and sane during this period, and positive and hopeful as well. So I'm going to share with you um, the prompts for a form that I created a few years ago that I call a blur. Um, and the idea is of, of physicalizing history um, and also playing with ideas of constancy. So I will share the prompt with you, or the prompts with you, and then I'll read a poem, which was my first example um, of the form in, in, in action, which is a poem. Uh, but the blur prompts will apply to all writing genres and even could apply to visual art as well. Um, so it doesn't have to simply be uh, only a poem, um, though that is my particular and peculiar affliction. But the, the, the form itself applies to all writing genres and visual art as well. Okay, so first, identify an object that is timeless or as I say, constant. This could be a family heirloom, could be a chair, or another object that's been in existence for decades, and that's important. It's an object that needs to have been in existence for at least 10 years, but ideally uh, longer, right? Um, so for example, in the poem that I'll read to you, um, I choose the object of a bullet, uh, but I also choose language uh, as my objects, right? Okay, second, define the purpose or function of that object in a few words. And this is the literal uh, function or purpose of the object that you choose. In just a few words. Next, locate or situate that object in a minimum of two time periods. So, for example, um, in the poem that I'll read shortly, my two time periods are 1921 and 2012. Draft language to detail the setting and situation in which the object is located in both time periods, right? So setting of the object um, in which the object is located in 1921, um, the setting and situation in which the object is located in 2012, for example. Next, identify the emotion or emotions associated with the object in each time period. So what are the emotions that the object would feel, might feel about itself? What are the emotions that others feel about the object? Again, in both time periods, and you need a minimum of two, right? Um, and I'll make these connections here um, in a moment. Next, personify the object. Give the object other human qualities in addition to emotion, which you just did in the previous prompt. Um, in both time periods. So give the object other human qualities 
in both time periods. This is an opportunity for maybe employ metaphor or simile or allegory, uh, analogies, so forth. Um, but make sure that you're giving it these human qualities for both time periods. And note, are they going to be the same or they, will they differ based on the time periods? Next, external observation. How do others, could be people, the media, animals, nature, view this object? So how do others, other entities, other things, other elements outside the object view the object that you choose, right? And make sure that, there, that for both time periods, you have at least two external observations, right? How others or other elements think about this object. Next, internal observation. How does the object view itself in both time periods? How does its view or perspective shift or differ based on the time period, right? You need a minimum of at least two uh, for each time period, right? So how does the object view itself, in my case, in 1921, and how does the object view itself in 2012? Next, identify the sensory elements associated with the object in both time periods. Are there sounds or sights or smells, um, tactile experiences, right? Tastes that are associated with your object um, in both time periods. Um, and do they change? Again, do they, do they differ? Do those sensory elements differ or change based on the time period? Next, you want to employ very muscular or physical verbs, right? Verbs that can do work for you as nouns, as adjectives, and of course as verbs. But you want very physical, very, very muscular verbs um, to make the writing really sizzle. Lastly, you'll determine if you will open your draft with the object, the a time period, setting, emotion, or personification. Add a few more notes. So explain, I'm gonna to explain to you that the timestamps are markers, right? When I say timestamps, so for example, I mean 1921 and 2012 in my poem, but you don't include those dates in the poem or in the writing, I should say, right? The blur, and this is where the, the name of the form comes from, the blur is in the shift um, in the object, right? And the world around it in each time frame. So the object is constant. The object is the thing that stays relatively the same, right? But how it's viewed and how it views itself, maybe even its physical appearance, will shift from the first period time period to the second. That's the work of the writing. So avoid using literally 1921 and 2012, for example, in your writing. The blur is in the movement between. Right. Um, also, I'm going to read uh, my poem, uh, my first poem in this in this uh, form, in the blur form. And then I'll point out the places where the prompts manifest in the poem. So this poem is called Tulsa Blur 1921 to 2012. Right. 1921, um, the year of the Tulsa race massacre, one of the most significant uh, race massacres in the country. Um and significant history. Uh, and then 2012, in 2012, uh, a drunk, angry white man went on a shooting spree in the Greenwood District, uh, targeting black folks. Uh, and he shot and killed several people on his shooting spree. So those are my, those are my time stamps, 1921 to 2012, all right? So I'm blurring in between those two, um, those two years. Tulsa Blur, Tulsa Blur, 1921 to 2012. Red dust simmering below skin of earth is how bullet transcends muscle. History, a howling fire, gasoline to ravenous mouth, like language, like hate. Irritable June heat in March, a trigger, fuse drawn to surface, indecisive sky. Gunpowder, ageless as blood, the north side of heaven ablaze. Africans tread Atlantic on familiar limbs. 
91-year-old slug lurking in elevator shaft bell curve, the front page of a newspaper, a senator's lips, the lynching bee, no, the cries, duped into minimum wage belief we are alive, buried in piles of our own toil, prosperity's rubble. Ancestors compelled to counsel, their pull stronger than our illusion, theirs the largest mob. So, um, my objects, as I mentioned a moment ago, are bullet, uh, bullet and language, right? And so those are the objects. And so the idea for me in this poem is so how do, how do the purpose and function of bullet and language change from 1920 in, in 1921 and then also in 2012 based on that action of that, of that man and the shooting spree, right? And the idea that in both time frames, a bullet was used, right? Or bullets were used. So the blur is connected to the bullet. That's my object. And then the language associated with um, the bullet, right? So the emotion that I employ here uh, in both time periods um, is hate. So in my example, hate is the emotion that's connected in both. So my, I don't, it doesn't change. There's no difference here, unlike in the prompts that I gave you. Um, but in my, in this particular example, it's hate in 1921, it's hate in 2012. Um, so external observations, right? So how do others view, um, the bullet or the actions that, uh, of 1921 and, and what happened in 2012? So that's where I invoke Africans tread Atlantic on familiar limbs, which is, um, sort of outside of the world of the poem in terms of outside of Tulsa, but it brings in this idea of this is more of the journey of what it is to be black in America, right? And that reference, of course, being to the, 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 the transatlantic trading of Africans um, in the 1600s. Also, 91-year-old slug lurking in elevator shaft, bell curve, the front page of a newspaper, a senator's lips, the lynching bee, know the cries. Those are all external observations uh, of this object or these objects, which are, again, bu bullets and hatred, or, hate, or language, I should say, uh, bullets and language. Um, the sensory elements uh, in both time periods here uh, manifest in the simmering in, and also the physical and the muscular verbs as well in the simmering um, in gasoline um, irritable June heat um, um, and let's see prosperity's rubble okay and then um, again it's some of those muscular verbs that I just mentioned as well right so Transcends, simmering, uh, ravenous, gasoline, and so forth. So those are examples of those muscular verbs that I mentioned. So I hope that you will benefit from this prompt. Again, it applies to, um, you can apply it to all genres of writing and visual art. I'd be very excited to see some visual artists take on this form and see what manifests as well. Um, I am editing an anthology of work, uh, again, all genres of writing and visual art, uh, of folks who employ this, uh, this prompt or these prompts for this form. Um, if you're interested in submitting your work for consideration, please email me at qalcontact495 at gmail.com. I'd love to see your work and I'd love to be able to consider it for publication. Thank you again. Um, and I pray that everyone is safe um, and that we all remember that we're all in this together. And so we must look out for one another and do what is right and safe to protect one another and be strong. Peace.